Welcome to Bioshock Infinite The Complete Story. All information gathered are from us playing the game and the wiki. What did you think of Bioshock Infinite? Enjoyed it? Hated it? Let me know in the comments down below. Our story today takes place during 1912, 40 years before the original games. Book of the Wit is taken by Robert and Rosalind Lutis to a lighthouse off the coast of Maine. The last message they leave him with is bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. The girl being Elizabeth, the debt. Well, we'll figure it out later. With those words in mind, Booker enters the lighthouse and into a random chair and rockets into the sky. This random chair brings him to Columbia, a floating city run by a crazy prophet, Zachary Comstock. Upon arriving, Booker begins looking for the girl right away, but what was supposed to be an undercover secret mission quickly causes a panic among the citizens of Columbia. When participating in a carnival game, the public sees that he has a scar that reads AD on his hand. Inconveniently, there are posters all over stating that the false prophet will have AD on his hand. Booker quickly learns how to use a skyhook and the guns of the soldiers and continues looking for Elizabeth. He finds her in the tower that she's come to know as a home. She agrees to go with him as he promises to bring her to Paris and away from her imprisonment. While she agrees to go, it isn't that simple as the songbird destroys the tower attempting to get to Booker. And having no other option, they jump off the tower and using the skylines, they eventually crash onto a shore. Their escape seems complete as they make for the nearest airship, but she realizes they're going to New York, not Paris. Refusing to be tricked, she knocks him unconscious. They argue about his true intentions as he finds her and get themselves involved in a rebellion taking place. Booker learns that Elizabeth has the ability to tear reality and reach into other worlds, bringing things into this world. This ability allows them to stay ahead of their pursuers. Once they please the right people and figuring out that Booker is only here to protect and rescue her, they manage to get onto another airship heading away from Columbia. But Songbird attacks the airship, forcing it to crash land. As they explore this new part of Columbia, they figure out just how an entire floating city came to follow one crazy prophet. Comstock had the Ludises construct a siphon device to stop Elizabeth's powers. He intended to groom her into being the next ruler of Columbia. But Lady Comstock began to become concerned with Comstock's methods of ruling Columbia. She was then murdered by Comstock to get everyone on his side against the rebels, and the Ludises then hid the truth of what happened. There are a few holes about this though, but before they can figure it out, Songbird kidnaps Elizabeth. Booker begins to chase the songbird again, but he loses sight of her, and just as he begins to feel despair of losing her, he finds himself brought to the future by an elderly Elizabeth. This much older Elizabeth explains that Booker has to rescue her. If he doesn't, she'll suffer decades of torture and brainwashing, and eventually take on Comstock's cause. And using her abilities to tear space and time, she will wage war on the entire world. She then gives Booker a note for her younger self. Booker quickly rescues Elizabeth and the pair run off to stop Comstock himself while trying to destroy the siphon, keeping Elizabeth's powers in check. They corner him quickly and as Booker beats on Comstock, Comstock demands that Booker reveal to Elizabeth her true past. Elizabeth is missing a portion of her pinky and Comstock repeatedly says that Booker knows why. Booker denies knowing anything and Elizabeth just asserts that he must have forgotten. After killing Comstock, they head off to destroy the siphon, and after learning why the songbird is imprinted on Elizabeth the way he is, they take control of him to destroy the siphon, while defending themselves from the rebels and the guards. And once everything's destroyed, Songbird heads straight for Booker. But this time, with all of her power awakened, Elizabeth transports herself, Booker, and Songbird to the underwater city of Rapture. While Elizabeth and Booker are safe, they watch the songbird die to the pressure of the water on the outside of the glass. Elizabeth understands everything now. Once they get back to the surface, there are lighthouses everywhere. Each lighthouse has different versions of them, a different timeline, a different dimension. She explains that in 1893, Robert Lutis approached Booker on behalf of Comstock, requesting, give us the girl and wipe away the debt. Robert was referring to Booker's infant daughter, Anna DeWitt, which is why Booker branded himself with AD on his hand. While Booker agreed to the arrangement, he changed his mind right away and chased after them. Comstock was the person Robert was giving the child to. They were going through the portal back to Columbia. 
But in a last second effort, Booker tried his hardest to grab and hold on to Elizabeth. But he couldn't take her back, and all he did was pull her finger through as the gateway was closing, severing her pinky. Existing in both realities thanks to that, gave her the ability to open tears into all the realities. Comstock saw potential in a daughter who could do such a thing, and even though the Ludices and himself had much better plans, he began to see how he could rule with this power. Seeing that Comstock had gone so far from their original plans, angered Robert, and Rosalind and himself brought Booker to this reality to rescue Elizabeth and end this. Elizabeth explains that no matter what they do, there will always be a Comstock who kidnaps the girl, and there will always be a Booker to rescue her. The only way to stop all the timelines and the threads is to kill Comstock before he was born, before the timeline splinter into all the versions of Comstock who try to conquer. Elizabeth takes Booker through another tier, to another time period, to a baptism Booker went to so many years ago. Booker was a soldier and killed a large number of people, something he was dealing with for a while. He went to this baptism to be forgiven and reborn. This Booker, the one that saved her, turned away from this baptism. It wasn't really important to him. But every Booker who takes the baptism becomes reborn as Zachary Comstock, the prophet, an eventual ruler of Colombia. Comstock, in later years, turns out to be sterile due to using the Ludus' tear machine, and knowing how he's connected to Booker, travels and deals with Booker to give himself a biological hair. The only way to stop the cycle is to break the circle. Booker allows various forms of Elizabeth to drown him where the baptism took place, before he can walk away or become Comstock. This ends the cycle, breaks the circle, and closes all the timelines where Comstock becomes the prophet of Columbia. Sadly, this isn't the end, as the timelines splinter at various points. So what about bookers who made poor decisions before the baptism? I guess we'll see in a DLC. This game gets confusing at times, and I hope we did it justice explaining it to you guys. Make sure you stick around as we dive into the DLCs next week, and we'll see you next time here at Eligible Monster.